Okay, thank you for that. I would like to um, formally intro uh, introduce you and welcome you to our five-month fellowship national certificate uh, for the virtual personal development coaching course for the year 2021 for mediators in Kenya. Uh, this is an initiative that uh, I must say is uh, quite timely uh, for all of us as uh, mediation and uh, dispute resolution professionals. And uh, we hope that um, this will improve and, uh, and, and be able to morph us into the dispute resolution ex experts that we intend to be. To kick us off, uh, we will begin with um, the national anthem, the first stanza in Kiswahili, and then we can proceed from there. E mungu nguvu yetu, ilete baraka kwetu, haki iwe ngao na mlinzi, na tukai na undugu, amani na uhuru, raha tupate na ustawi. So as mentioned earlier, this is an open course. Uh, it is a five month fellowship national certificate for mediation and dispute resolution uh, professionals. Um, it is a, a virtual, it, the fellowship is a virtual personal development coaching course for the year 2021 for mediators in Kenya. And it has been cascaded into five, three, five free workshops that will uh, be cascaded into uh, five months, uh, with, that is within uh, July to November. The sessions will be happening on Saturdays, once a month on Saturdays uh, from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. East African time uh, via Zoom. And this will come in, culminate into a graduation event during the 24-hour lead-in summit. Uh, that will be held in uh, 19th uh, to 20th November 2021. It is also good to note that um, there will be continuous learning credits, uh, 10 hours, and the intention, the biggest takeaway for um, this fellowship is that we as uh, mediators and dispute resolution professionals are able to renew ourselves, um, retool our skills and reframe our strategy. I would like to kindly share and explore uh, what the fellowship course will take us through and what will be our experience with that. So just give me one minute. Um, so as we explore the fellowship course, what we are going to be looking at is our foundations in conflict transformation, uh, specifically wellness coaching, practice design coaching and conflict coaching. Now, the fellowship has been divided uh, into uh, several months, and uh, the kickoff was on uh, July 11th, which was the preview weekend. Participants were able to be the participants were able to be taken through um, an introduction. Uh, quote unquote introduction of the fellowship, what it was about, what they could expect, what they would expect with the, with the program and, uh, and also the niceties of uh, registration and all that. Um, the first week of the fellowship is uh, called the introduction weekend, which is on the 17th of July. The second week, the business weekend will be hosted on the 21st of August, 2021. The third week, uh, which is the Smart Tech Weekend, will be hosted on the 18th of September. The fourth week, which is the Impact Weekend, will be hosted on the 16th of October. And then the fifth and last week, which is the Integration Weekend, will be hosted uh, on 19th through to November, 20, uh, November 2021. Um, and this will lead with this will also um, contain the graduate the graduation event uh, which will be hosted during the 24 hour lead in summit so as you can see we have uh, quite a lot um, to cover at this point I would like to introduce Today, okay, I would like to introduce our faculty members that are available with us today. Uh, one thing I'd like to note is that we have um, uh, we have other faculties that will be joining us in the course of uh, the, the sessions within the five months, but, uh, and uh, each of them will be handling uh, different respective areas, and this will unfold as we proceed. However, today being the 17th of uh, July, 2021, it is our introductory session. 
And so I will introduce the faculties that are available at, that are present with us today. And I will begin um, with uh, I will begin with our fellowship director, uh, Reverend Professor Peter Gishure. He is the director of he's our fellowship director and is also the postgraduate uh, the director for postgraduate studies at the Catholic University of Eastern Africa. He holds a doctorate in uh, theology and religious studies from the Catholic University of Louvain, Belgium, and a master's in peace studies from University of Notre Dame. USA. Uh, Professor Gishure uh, is the theological advisor of the Catholic Justice and Peace Commission Kenya, and his area of research is in alleviation of poverty and sustainable development. Our people are suffering because they do not uh, know that mediators exist. That is a quote that uh, we can take away from Reverend Professor Peter Gishure, a statement that he made during the Africa International Mediation a uh, week that was hosted in December last year, 2020. Now, Professor will be, Reverend Professor Peter Gishuri, our fellowship director, will be taking us through uh, conflict transformation, the area of conflict transformation. Now, in this area, conflict transformation will involve um, reconstruction and reconciliation. So as mentioned earlier, the fellowship has been broken down into five months. And within those and uh, within the five months, we have segments that will be tackled within the five months, and so uh, segments and sub segments that will be tackled through the five months. For the first uh, month, July, which is today our introductory uh, month, we will handle three sub uh, topics. One is a spectrum of conflict transformation. Two is conflict, sorry, spectrum of conflict resolution. Two conflict transformation, and three a set of techniques. In August, we will tackle, uh, he will take us through arbitration one-on-one -on -one and uh, also active nonviolence. In September, he will take us through the fifth topic on uh, rest restorative justice and retributive justice. In October, he will take us through reconciliation, addressing the eight actors. And finally, in November, he will take us through peace building. Reverend Professor Peter Gishuri Karibu San, uh, please feel welcome. Thank you. Our next uh, faculty is a fellowship coach, uh, Morenike Obi Farinde, founder ODR Africa Network. Mrs. Morenike is the founder of ODR Africa Network and a certified online mediator. She's also a fellow of the National Center for Technology and Dispute Resolution and board member for the International Council for Online Dispute Resolution. Uh, Morenik is also a member of the training faculty at the, Lego, at the Lagos Multidoor Courthouse. And uh, for those who may not be aware, the Lagos Multidoor Courthouse is the equivalent of um, the uh, Kenya uh, Judicial Court and Expedition. Thank you. Mediator uh, Maureen, Mrs. Morenike, kindly feel uh, welcome to our fellowship. Um, Next, we have our fellowship coach, uh, Coach Maina Azimio, he, who is an experiential trainer in holistic wellness and preventive health. Coach Maina Azimio is an experiential trainer in uh, holistic wellness and preventive health. He focuses on the four foundational dimensions of wellness, which are physical health, mental, emotional, and financial wellness, as he said in his introduction. He teaches high achievers uh, the importance of taking good care of their health, even as they work hard to produce results in other areas. He approaches wellness holistically. Physical health is taking good care of the body. The mind controls all functions of the body. It chooses what we feed the body with, including the emotions we entertain. In today's world, money is the enabler of wellness and everything else. These four are the four foundational pillars of wellness. And with that, um, our fellowship coach, Coach Maina Zumio, will be taking us through the four foundational dimensions of wellness. Again, this has been cascaded through uh, the five months that we will be uh, attending the fellowship. And so for our introductory month uh, today, we will be going, he will take us through physical health wellness. 
in August, he'll take us through mental wellness. In September, he will take us through the third topic, emotional wellness. In October, he will take us through financial wellness. And then finally, in November, he will take us through um, integration. Uh, and uh, as this will culminate, of course, to the, to the 24 hour lead in summit. So we have just um, explored how, how our session will be um, cascaded and how our session will proceed over the, the, the five months. Uh, just a few housekeeping rules. Kindly, as uh, we have our session, kindly feel free to use the chat function to put in your comments there, to put, to put in your questions inside there, and they will be addressed as our faculties are taking us through their presentations. Um, Yes, yeah. so kindly put in your comments there too. Uh, for now, we will have 50 minutes with our fellowship coach, Coach Azimio, and then we will proceed to a five minutes health break. After that, we will come back and have a presentation uh, with, um, our, uh, with our fellowship director for 40 minutes. And then after that, we will proceed um, with a 20 minute session just before we close where we can just uh, deal with administrative issues and just keep you abreast and let you know how we will proceed over the course of five months. As we proceed, I will let you know how we will um, uh, proceed with the time. And with that, uh, we are now getting to now the, the gist of, of it all. And we're now getting to the beginning of the first workshop. Um, Coach Maina, Karibu Sana, we are very grateful to have you here. Uh, you mentioned that the foundational pillars of wellness, you have already told us about the foundational uh, pillars of, of wellness. It would be very interesting for you to, you know, as you, as you take away uh, and take us through the, um, your, your presentation and uh, your session, uh, maybe begin, uh, begin with that, telling us about a bit more about um, these four pillars as the foundational um, areas of wellness and then also just as a point to note as i've mentioned uh colleagues will be putting in their questions in the chat so kindly if you could kindly handle um the questions alongside your presentation so that we can proceed from there thank you so much Karibu sana coach azimio the floor is yours Thank you, thank you, thank you very much, Emrod. And good mo good morning again. Uh, I'm happy to be on board. I'm trying to share my screen. Can you enable me to share screen? I have some presentation slides. Yeah. So I'll be happy to be able to share. Mm -hmm. So basically, as I had uh, mentioned briefly when I was uh, introducing myself, I am a wellness coach, and today I would want us to focus on uh, what wellness is because in most cases people talk wellness they mistake wellness with a health and health is not all wellness so it's much bigger than that but uh before i go to the actuals i would want just briefly to say who i am uh, so that uh, we are able to get to understand each other uh, Today, I was invited to speak about uh, wellness. Uh, and wellness is bigger. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can. You can, eh? okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. So uh, wellness is bigger than health. In most cases, we talk about health, but we forget about wellness. So today it's what I'll be speaking to because for the longest time before 2015, we used to define health in the terms that it is uh, in the WHO. Coach, uh, Coach Maynard, uh, are you able to enlarge your screen so that uh, all the participants can be able to see? Okay, let me see. Let's put it in the presenter mode. Let me check. Okay. Thank you. Uh, 
uh, allow allow me to me uh, one minute i see how i can navigate around this you see i belong to the old school so this technology they give us a bit of a challenge but uh, i am trying to work on this it should be at the bottom right Uh, so that we start recording. Okay, proceed. You're good now? Yes. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Sorry. Uh, that's where we are now. Uh, we flow. Um, sorry, the technical hitch is uh, now being sorted out. Uh, Maina Azimio is a trained and satisfied professional coach. I'm accredited to International Coaching Federation. I'm also a trained and certified mediator. I am an entrepreneurship trainer. That is where I came from before I studied coaching and uh, mediation. I am a startup angel investor and I'm also a venture capitalist. I am a business consultant and uh, I am also a Pan-Africanist at heart. So these are the things that I have been doing much of my life. And in the process of uh, working through this, I decided to get into the space where I can't be able to help other people to become who I am. So today, because I'm talking about health, let me see how we can be able to roll quickly and uh, secure the time you have lost. So what is health? And what is wellness? I want to begin with wellness. And uh, wellness and wealth are integrated because you cannot define wellness without mentioning the word health. So wellness is a process of learning about and engaging in behaviors that are likely to lead to optimal health if practiced properly and consistently. The question here is, do we learn, do we engage? And do we do it consistently and in the right way? That is the biggest problem we have. We in Azima Wellness, I'm the founder of a company called Azima Wellness Consultants. We focus on high achievers in Kenya, in Africa. And who are these high achievers? The high achievers are the people who did well on the academic realm, and they are the professionals we have today. Those of us who are good in school, congratulations very much. You became professionals. We are the ones carrying the burden of most of the families. I'm sure most of us have got uh, relatives we take care of, and because they refer to us, we need to set the pace for them. If we don't, we let them down. So personally, what I have done, I have studied closely and have seen that most of the professionals, what we do, we focus more on the daily burdens and we forget to do the things that will be able to bring optimal health and we grow old in a robust health. Example, if you look at Kenya, the politicians, and this is very strange, the politicians are living long than us. Uh, if you look at Jojo now, Jojo is at one or two years. Moi lived to be 95 or 96, whatever age they said, but uh, close to 100 years, even with all the stress that there is in politics. You can all remember where Moi was. Uh, people like Na Rubia, and Rubia was in detention 96 years. Mudiawari today is alive at 93. Uh, Manu Chadaria 
is uh, 91 years. You can see the kind of people I'm mentioning towards 100 years. The question is, why not us? Even Mandela, after staying for 27 years in Robben Island, working on rocks, he lived to be 94 years. But let us converse. How long are we living, we the middle class, we the professionals? 60, 65, 70. Not many of us are even going to 80 years. So we die before we actually get into the prime age as per the dispensation, because if Georgia is 102, and if you go to the Bible, Genesis chapter six, verse three, God said that our years would be 120 years. And many people, are, there's quite a good number of people, not many, by the way, quite a good number of people are living past 100 years. I think in one right now, we have got more than 1,000, 1, 115,000 people who are centenarians. Centenarians are people who have taken good care of their health. That is what we focus on. So what is optimal health? How do we achieve it? So there are components that we need to take care of so that you can be able to get into that space. Top on them is air. We live on oxygen. And the problem we have is that uh, we have polluted the environment. So if you are breathing contaminated oxygen, it messes your whole life. So what are we doing today? We are living in areas where the oxygen we breathe in is not clean. So we must make, take care of our environment. Those are the behaviors I was talking about, the definition of wellness. Water. Our body is water to 80%. If you do not take the right water, you will not be able to live to be a centenarian. F the food we eat, the quality of sleep, not the number of hours. We concentrate so much on the number of hours. It matters a lot. Activity. In another word, you call it exercise. I know some people when they hear of exercise, they, the body react in a negative way. Exercise is punishment to them. But for sure, we, when we live a sedentary lifestyle, we get down. So hormones, the body has hormones. Uh, the immune system of the body has got requirements for it to be operating in optimal. And COVID has taught us very well that uh, if you have a, a compromised immunity, your health goes down, gut, digestion, metabolism. Then we have the emotions. We'll be covering all this in details in the next uh, in, in the next sessions. But let's now start begin by understanding the human physiology, which is the center of uh, human uh, health. So God, in His wisdom, created us as a complex system. I can say this is without fear of contradiction that our human body, you the way you are on yourself or the way I am, we are the most complex single unit to ever grace the face of the earth. The most complex single unit. And why do I say this? If you look at the way the human body is, on the far right, no left, we have got a cell. We are made of one, 100 trillion cells, like the one on the far right. And those cells are put together to form 78 organs, 78 organs. Then those 78 organs operate in systems, the body systems. We have got 11 body systems. Our work, to live well and to live a long life, to become productive is a struggle to maintain our body organs, which are made of cells and which make us the whole being that we are. Tissues are part of the organs. So this is who we are. And uh, God created us in his own image and likeness. We all know that, uh, okay, and I don't know, Today, I can see we are 48 now. I don't know where you are from the faith perspective. And I would want you to get into the chat box. Emerald, you'll tell me. 
I want to know if we have got majority Christians or majority Muslims or majority atheists. So it's your right to be whoever you are. But uh, I would want to know if when I'm quoting the Bible, I'm talking to you because I would want us to flow together so that you can know what we need to do. This is presentation I made just for you. And if it does not talk to your heart and to your mind, it will not be delivering the message that I want to deliver today and make you to do those steps that I mentioned about wellness. How many people are of Christian background? I just want confirmation so that you can agree that when I quote the Bible in Genesis chapter one, verse 26 and 27, God created us in his image and likeness. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I can see uh, you are confirming it. So this man that God created in his image and likeness, and it was man and woman at that stage, he was created as a spirit. And I'm sure that uh, we have got uh, Professor Gishure here. Uh, he can confirm if this is true or not. I am not a religious person, but I read the Bible as an authority. So after the creation of the man in Genesis 1.26, God in Genesis 2 verse 7, he made man from clay, from clay. And he breathed a breath of life in his nostrils. This one made us, he made the first man a human being. Get this correct. We are not human doings. It is not what we do that matters. It's the human being that we are. So this is very critical. And I would like us to be able to operate within that context throughout these lessons from today going forward. We'll be looking more into how do we maintain that human being that God created in his image and likeness. The image part has been proved very well because when God said Jesus, Jesus born by Virgin Mary, and he grew with the people of his time, he was just like us. And all the images we have of Jesus, the representation of Jesus, you can see that uh, for sure, the son looked like the father. And because God sent his son on planet Earth to live among us for 33 years, and he did, we can testify that Jesus, who is the son of God, was just like us. So even the father is like us. But now the likeness part, likeness. That is an area that I would like to be discussing more, but we'll come to that later. But anyway, this body that God gave us to take care of, what does it require for it to live? Point number one, we require fresh air. Fresh air comes from trees. By the way, if you go to the Bible creation story, there are some three things that God did not create. Three. At the first, the creation was he was using the spoken word. And whatever he called to be, it became. Yeah. Okay, just but, I want to remove for you this noise. Sorry? Check my earphones. So there's some interference. I don't know if I'm Emerald. You can tell me if uh, there's any question. Or it is me who is being addressed to. I'll get to that. So I can yeah. hear some noise coming from the background. Maybe is it a con communication to me or is some noise? No, no, it's just some noise. I will deal with it. Thank you. Oh, okay, thank you. Thank you very much. So I continue. So what does do we need? Because see, uh, for us to be able to live optimally, we require oxygen. And oxygen is actually 96% of our requirement. You can't live for five minutes without oxygen. Nothing else. I have arranged the needs that we have to give our body for it to operate optimally in the order of priority. So top on the ridge is air. Most of the middle class live in cities. Cities, we don't have trees. And oxygen comes from trees or vegetation. Let me call it vegetation. So those of you who are living in Eastlands, Poleni Sana, Uko Nikubaya Zaidi, but Nairobi is a very good city, the green city under the sun. No, not many cities actually are, are like Nairobi, because Nairobi, uh, the one I know, uh, is a city that I, I always admire and throughout the world, Nairobi is admired. Why? Nairobi is a city which has got forests, virgin forests in it. 
Karura forest is over 2,000 acres. From Karura forest, we have got a city park, 90 acres. We have got a Nini Aboreta, 60 acres. You can see that they are growing. You come the other side of Nairobi, we have got Gong Road Forest. It was over 3,000 acres, like in Kenyans, the way they like land, Mugoda. I don't know what is wrong with us. But we still have got over 1,000 acres. Then we have got National Park. It is, but then Nairobi is the only city with a national park inside the city. National Park, not a game reserve. Others have got zoos, but in Kenya, we have got a national park. There's a very good forest when you're driving to Bomas, towards Rungai. It's a forest in the city. Then from there, we have got Giraffe Center, the other side opposite. We have got a Botanical Garden. It's also a, a, quite a good and in a, a amount of forest. Then you go to Ololua Conservancy. It's in Nairobi, where we have got Institute of Primate Research. And we can continue mentioning them. I just wanted to qualify the fact that we have got forests, not parks. Nairobi, we have got 23. Why do we used to have 22 green spots? But now with the audition of Michoki Park, we have got 23 green spots that you can go. The people who work in the city, I normally tell them, during your lunch break, take time to go to Huru Park, take time to go to Michoki Park, take time to walk to City Park. City Park is just uh, a walking distance. Or go to Aboretum, you don't need a matter to take you to Aboretum to be able to commune with nature and get oxygen. So question number one, how long? Can you live without oxygen? I'll be go to the chat box and give me that answer so that we can now see if we are taking good care of the body. There is no way you can buy good health. It comes from action. So lack of oxygen affects the higher center, your brain. And the brain is the one that dictates all that you do. We'll be talking more about the brain in the mental wellness lesson. So I will just want to see the effect of oxygen on our health if we do not do things the right way. How do you ensure that your brain get adequate oxygen? How do you do it? So these are things that I would like to be looking about and we'll be talking about it more in the later sessions. But for now, I just want to introduce and we, you can now start to reflect and see if you are doing things the right way. COVID has taught us again. I have been talking about this since 2015 when uh, SDG started. It's when I started Azima Wellness Consultants and I have been telling people that we are not doing things the right way and we need to take care of our health first before anything else. But people were not listening to me. Most of us, especially the middle class, because maybe of the pressure we have from families, from our dependents, we are more into money than taking care of our health. But COVID came and stopped everything else. COVID is a health disease. It's health condition, but it has stopped everything from happening in the world. So nothing is more important than our health. So what do we do to be able to get our body in good operation? So if you have taken care of the health, the next item that is very important is water. Water. If you don't have water in your body, you will not live. And this is why our body is 70% of water, the hyaluronic cells are all water. You can see the cell that we have on the left, on the right here. So if you do not replenish the water in your body, you become dehydrated. The cells will start dying. Blood is water. Blood is the carrier material. It's the one that transports even oxygen. Even when you breathe, after you have breathed, you breathe in the oxygen, it gets into your lungs, then it is transferred into the circulation system. Breathing is in the respiration system, but it exchange from the respiration system to the circulation system. So what take the oxygen to the organs is the circulation system, it is water. So if you don't take enough water, then you are not going to get optimal health. How, how much water? do you drink per day? 
How much water are you supposed to drink per day? Do you know? Because we, the middle class, we are the ones who are supposed to be the light of our people. Are we doing it? This is a conversation I want us to be having until the graduation day. I would be wanting these answers. So as I ask you questions, it's good to be able to know. By the way, don't be, don't go with the rumor. I'm at the saying that you're supposed to take eight glasses of water. We are not the same size. We have got different body size. So truth is, at our level, we can be able to connect a bit of science and what you take is proportional to your body. So what is the formula of how much water you are supposed to take? This one, I can give you an answer. It's your body weight. Your body weight divided by nine. You get the number of glasses of water that you're supposed to take. So there's a saying that say water is life. And we use water in many of our activities, but the most critical is drinking water because you replenish the kind of the amount of water that your body is taking in. And there are very many functions that are driven by water in our body. Problem, there is water and quality of water and there are beverages. Where I come from, uh, Maina is from Muranga County and uh, in Muranga, uh, they say every time is tea time. If you visited my mom and you did not take a cup of tea, she'll say that uh, you, have, uh, you have refused to be a good guest. If we visit somebody's home and you are not given a cup of tea, then you'll say that that person is very mean. So we take beverages that have additives in them and we say that we are hydrating the body. Far from it. So what do you take? We have got cold and hot beverages. So do you take the right beverages that are able to feed into the body system? Point of concern, choose wisely what you use to hydrate your body. Otherwise you are overworking your cells because they will have to purify the, the ingredients that get into your body with the water that you take. I have shared this to guide you on what kind of water you take. Normally the water itself, not the beverages because beverages have got additives. So many kinds of additives and different kinds. Soda has got its own different one. There is the sugary colored, water that we, they call juice. It is not juice, by the way, it's just commercial. It's just test glands. They just want you to get addicted to taking it. It's not uh, juice. Juice is from a fruit, fresh, without any additives, without even uh, preservatives. So I have given you this to give you a slight indication on the kind of water that you should take. The best water is alkaline water, alkaline water. There's alkaline and there's uh, acidic water. I get concerned when I talk to middle class and when I ask them about mineral water, we buy those bottled mineral water, but very few people read the minerals that are written on the label of the mineral water. And again, even by the way, even those who did science in university, they don't even know what those minerals mean and what effect they have with the body. So this is something that I would request us to be more careful about because we are overloading our body in a way that we can avoid. The best way to cure your health is preventive health, not curative. So this gives you the kind of water that you should drink. Avoid the acidic level. You can see where acidic starts, the good and the bad and the better. Then below, when you get now to the coffee, the tea, the juices, those colored water, uh, the sodas, uh, the drinks, all those, you are putting in a, a lot of acid in your body. And uh, Professor Otto in 1931 discovered that uh, no disease can survive in an alkaline state, even cancer. He got our, Nini, he won a Nobel Prize for discovering the cause of cancer. Cancer cells thrive in an acidic state in the body. So if you take more acidic stuff, you know what you're doing to your body. And the alternative is that if you take a kaline, it is going to be better for you. So for us as middle class and for us to talk of mediation and 
talking about nini, living a thriving uh, life, we must first and foremost take care of the body so that we can be able to get ourselves going in the right way. Sleep. We are sacrificing sleep. Why? To look for money. Or to have fun. The way we are doing things, honestly, this is not good. And we set the pace for the people who are below us. The middle class, I'm on you today. The professionals, I'm on you today. And I'll be on you because you are the people who are admired by the people down the society structure. If you are doing the wrong thing, the people below you will do the same. So how much sleep do you enjoy per night? And more so, more important, what time do you sleep and what time do you wake up? God made our complex body in a way that it must switch off every 24 hour cycle to repair and rejuvenate. So there's a very big reason why we sleep. And if you do not willingly switch off, the body will demand for it. You start dozing where you are, you sleep walk. In fact, anywhere you can sleep. How much sleep do you require? Is it the quality or the length of sleep that counts? So what is your understanding of sleep? So this is something that we'll be talking about because most people make mistake. They think that uh, it is the number of hours, but it is more than that. When you sleep, condition you sleep in, when you wake up, it must align with the circadian rhythm and the circadian clock. So if you don't do that, you are not getting your body well. So then we come to food. After sleep is food number four. Food, by the way, most people think food is come number first, but it cannot, it's not before oxygen. It is not before water and it's not before sleep. So in food, what you need to do is to be careful on what you eat as well. You'd eat to nourish. Again, media has programmed us to be more attentive to the taste of food and pleasure. By the way, nowadays we are eating for pleasure. Like where I come from again, allow me to be using me as an example. Where I come from, food is used as a form of entertainment. And I'm sure some of you could be in my, my league. Food as a form of entertainment. So if food is being used as a form of entertainment, two things are likely to happen. You overeat, you eat the wrong food, then it has effect on your body. So food gives the 100 trillion cells in the body energy to function. Food is a fuel that powers the 11 body system, systems that run our complex body. So the question is, which kind of foods feed into which organ? Because we said you have 78 organs. This is complex. I said our body is the most complex single unit to ever grace the face of the earth. And this one, I know for sure it is true. So now this is how we should be able to guide the body. We should eat in a certain set system. 24 hours, we sleep about eight hours in a day. If you less from 24, eight hours, they remain 16. Normally we eat three meals in a day. If you divide the 16 hours, you see every five hours. By the way, if you eat a uh, whole food that release glucose slowly, by five hours, it is depleted. So you need another input. So you, every five hours, but then when you're planning your meal, Ensure that you have a meal every five hours, that we have breakfast, we have lunch, and you have supper. So those three meals. But again, you need to know what to eat in the morning and why. You need to know what to eat lunch and why, and what to eat for supper. And the quantities also. You don't need energy to sleep, by the way. Because some people don't eat lunch, but they eat supper, and a lot of it. Then they go to sleep, ikoshida. The body is regulated by the circadian rhythm, it has its own circadian clock. And you can see this clock on the left. Every two hours, every two hours, there's something that the body focuses on. And if you now, if when you're making your own, uh, nini, your own uh, meal plan and your operation plan and your sleeping plan and everything else, it should align with the circadian clock. 
even the time you drink water, the time you take juice, the time you take fruits, because timing is of the essence. It is not just what you take, when you take it, and in what condition you take it also matters. Now, if you make your body in a good way, if you feed your body right, with the right food, it is going to give you optimum health. And that is when you can enjoy life longevity. How do you follow this? I know most people, when they eat breakfast, like now we had breakfast in the morning, before, break, before lunch, you do snacking in between meals. Do you do snacking in between meals? Do you understand when the food hits the stomach, what happens? You know the digestion and metabolism is a chemical process. So the moment food hits in the stomach, the body senses that uh, something new has come in, then it activates the digestion system. To digest and break food, it takes chemicals. By the way, HCL, hydrochloric acid, so those acids, when they are released so that they can break down the food, they affect your walls of the stomach. And this is very heavy process. That's why after a heavy meal, you see you start dozing. And nobody don't like being called to speak in the afternoon, especially when uh, we used to have uh, meetings in halls. Because if you see people after lunch, it's most likely, unless you engage people very well, they start dozing. And it is not very good, especially as a speaker, when your audience start dozing. It's either they are disconnecting from you, either you are boring them or you have lost their attention. But in the afternoon after lunch, people doze because of the effect of digestion and metabolism. The HCL and other enzymes that are used to break down the body, they hold the body in a way that uh, you do not have enough to keep you going. Again, blood is focused into the stomach to aid in digestion. So this is a very heavy exercise. Don't eat all the time, please. Make sure that uh, you have a meal plan. Eat at the right time and eat the right food prepared in the right way. And the source of the food has to be right. Most of the food now we are having in our Nini market is chemicalized food. Good thing in Nairobi you have organic food. If you want organic food, and that's what I recommend that you go for because of the advantages it has, you will be able to live in a better way. You avoid diseases and you save your money because we'll be talking at the third lesson about money. Much of the money, by the way, from most Kenyans and the middle class is going to hospitals. We don't own the hospitals. Neither do we own the things used in hospital. We don't do even syringes, even needles, ah, even cotton wool. It's imported or it's made by Asians in Kenya. This is something that we'll be discussing in the fourth lesson when you're talking about uh, Nini, uh, financial wellness, because if we don't make what we use, we cannot talk of expanding our economy, neither can we grow. So avoid snacking because it has got its, apply, it, it, its effect and have a logical meal plan and learn how metabolism works. All these things are in Google. Good thing is not like before those early days during my time, by the way, to get information was very, very expensive. Biological books were very expensive. Even getting them where to buy them. I remember we used to buy, send people who are traveling outside to buy certain books for us so that we can be able to get access to information. In the university and the medical school, certain books were very rare. There were reference books and you couldn't, you people are queuing to get access to them. Nowadays, they are just a click away on your smartphone. The type of food and the amount and the timing of meals have a very big bearing on your physique. Shedding weight requires a well-planned approach. Personally, as you see me, I was three times obese in my earlier days. And I struggled for the longest time on how to reduce my weight. I was like the person on the left, not on the right. So I didn't know when to eat breakfast, when to eat lunch, and when to eat dinner. I didn't know about circadian rhythm. And that's why I became an experiential trainer to share how life needs to go. So what I want to ask us to do is to 
follow the right process and channel so that you can get the best results. I used this approach and I was able to move from this. This is me. That's who I was in uh, the early, in late 90s and uh, 2000 up to 2010, 2012 is when I got my Damascus movement. I was 98 kgs when I was at this level. With my height, by the way, that was three times of best. And I could not even be able to climb stairs. I used to avoid stairs, I was using lifts and my energy levels were very low during those times. But when I got my Damascus moment and I was able to get advised on how I need to run through the process of changing, I committed. My doctor told me that I'm overloading an old car when I was hitting 50 years and I did not want to continue doing that because I know when you overload an old car, what happens? Because the body organs are not becoming bigger. The excess weight that you have in your body is being taken by the same organs and they are not growing. Now you see the transformation from my before and my after. And you can see now I became a hiker. I do hiking and I love hiking. You can see on the top here, I'm at the peak of uh, Pikuhuru, is the highest, is the rooftop of Africa. The person I'm with here is a governor. I stay in Kajiado. This is a governor of Kajiado, Olelenku. I took him to Kilimanjaro. I take people for hiking, especially high performers. I take them for hikes so that they can be able to challenge themselves and conquer whatever is ahead of them. So you can see what we do and what you can do when you are able to follow the right channel. And this is a kind of life that I want to encourage the middle class, high performance and professionals to also explore because life is not in offices, life is outside. So simple, don't wish for a good body, work for it. If you work for a good body, you will get it and how do you achieve that? Food is the building blocks that build our body, that build our organs, that build the cells. This system that God gave to us, all the things that you put into the body, it is you who decide. It's you who look for it. God has revealed himself to us to let us know what is good for our body and what is not. And that's why education is very important. We are the most fairly educated people in our society. So when you're doing the wrong things or doing the right things in the wrong way, because they still have an effect, the big question is, what will you tell God during your day of judgment? Because he helped you. He gave you a sharp brain. You went to school and congratulations because you studied well. Because also there are those people who had a good brain, but they didn't study well. You did it. But when it comes to doing, the way you are living your life, is God happy with you? Are you taking care of this system that he gave you? Because those who believe in Holy Trinity, I know there's some divisions in the church. Uh, the Holy Trinity, God the Father, and God the Son who is Jesus, and God the Holy Spirit. And Paul said that our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So if our body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, that means we have got we are within the Trinity because this body is that we have is not ours, it's God's. And we take good care of it. And one very, very good example to prove this, the human body, even in death, we don't throw away the human corpse. Everywhere in the world, the people all over, they respect even a dead body and they bury it. Even Muslims, they don't keep much. They don't have a lot of uh, storage of dead bodies, but they bury it in a respectable way. For me, and this is my own conclusion, I'm not saying it's scientific, but it's my own conclusion. The reason why human beings have a lot of respect for the human body is because it's the temple of the Holy Spirit. It's for God. So we take care of it. All the things that I have been mentioning, oxygen, God, made the body in an automated way that it does many things on its own, but it requires our input. One example, oxygen, we breathe automatically. We breathe without any, uh, any effort, it is automated, but your body can only take in the oxygen in the area that you are in. So it's upon you, 
to take your body where there's fresh oxygen. So if you're in a polluted environment, your body can only breathe that polluted air. What does it do? You are desecrating God's body. And that's why I had want, I, it is always good to start with uh, first and foremost, we take care of the body, which is going to take us to the next level. So what do you eat? Chemicalized food. Any of you who are in farming here, agribusiness, you think more about money, instead of thinking how you can secure human life. I tell people who come to us, I'm a venture capitalist. So if you come to us and you want to do agriculture production, the first thing I ask you is what are you going to use? So when you come to us and you're asking us to give you money to buy fertilizers and the chemicals, uh, nini, uh, uh, nini, uh, the chemicals to spray weeds and uh, such to grow food, which is going to get into the dinner table. Then people are sick, they go to hospital. You can be assured you are going to decline your requests. So that is not a mistake. We do it for that. So from there now, again, uh, as I finish, uh, exercise. We also call it movement because some people, when they hear the word exercise, uh, the body goes on a hyper mood. So movement. If you live a sedentary life, honestly, you are quoting disaster. Why? Movement is the most important activity to support the body. God gave us a responsibility to help complete the body functions. Exercise helps the body to inhale adequate oxygen, but you should be where there is clean air. One of the things like now, uh, I am feeling very bad with uh, the way the situation is turning out now with uh, work at home, work on a, your workstation through the computers and laptops and, and uh, smartphones, because we are doing it seated. You know, when you used to teach when I'm standing, uh, I am walking around the podium. I do not uh, make my presentations on the podium. I walk around the stage. I know that I'm exercising, but now I'm seated. I can't be moving around. You don't breathe adequately when you're seated. Take that to the bank. You breathe well when you're upright and when you're walking, when you're moving. And God made a very good plan for this. Back to the Garden of Eden, there were no fridges that time. There were no storing food. So he made man a hunter-gatherer. By a hunter-gatherer, it means that you walk around to get for food. So he, he wake up in the morning. You can see Adam and Eve in the morning, they wake up. For them to get breakfast, they go hunting for it. So they walk around on a exercise. Then during lunch hour, they go looking for, again, what they're going to eat. You walk around. And supper also, you do the same. So it's only when you're asleep that you are sedentary, but for a few hours. So we used to have very good setup that uh, we were walking and we are operating, we are running up and down. But now we are getting our food in the fridge. You're getting our food in Carrefour and Naivash and Zucchini. So we put them in the fridge. Hey, now, working is again seated, we are sedentary. When you get to the home in the evening, you take the remote and you are changing your TV stations from a remote point. Where are you taking your body? You are sedentary. So what happens? Exercise helps the body to inhale enough oxygen. The runner has said, exercise powers the lymphatic system and lymphatic fluid. And this is, by the way, God had a reason for this. Blood has got a pump. It pumps the body, the blood throughout the body, but we have got the lymphatic fluid. This does not have a pump. What role does the lymphatic fluid and lymphatic system have in our body? Very critical, by the way. It is the one that removes toxins. And with a polluted environment we are living in from the air, from the food we take, from the items that we are using, because like even the polish, that is being used to polish our houses and our offices. It has got lead and many other chemicals. We have got so much chemicals that are going around us. So, but the God gave us a system that is able to remove the, the toxins from our body. But that lymphatic fluid does not have a pump. It is powered when you walk. And that's why exercise. Don't, don't associate exercise with losing weight. That is just one off. But exercise is a must have if you're going to have optimal health. 
And you, the middle class, I want to talk to you. Listen to me. You are the worst culprit in this area. Our work, by the way, take us into a level that we sit down. Do we have accountants in the house? Accountants, you sit too much. Bankers, you sit too much. Uh, architects, you sit too much. At least engineers, they go to the site. There are so many professionals whose work involves getting seated. If you're one of them, be deliberate. Create time for activity. So this is what I, I normally advise. When you are working, after every two hours, take a break of five minutes and walk around, wherever you are. Walk around because you need to be able to power your body system, to be able to purify and to exercise. It does not cost you anything. Look, walking, just walking. All these things, the benefits you get from walking, it is, does not require any, 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 any equipment. It's just you and your body and you walk if you don't have physical, physical challenges. If you have physical challenges, there are things that we recommend that you can use depending on where you have got those challenges. So anybody and everyone should be able to exercise the body or move the body unless you have got certain challenges of which there is an alternative to that. Take a health break every two hours. I had said that actually then uh, and exercise, exercise now, apart from even just uh, giving you the ability to breathe well, exercise also strengthens the cardio and skeletal muscles and support blood circulation to all cells. Remember I mentioned that uh, blood is the one that takes even oxygen to the cells, to the organs. So if you are sedentary, some of your parts don't get oxygen and they start dying. They don't get oxygen, they don't get nutrients, and also it does not carry away the toxins for expulsion. Because blood does two functions. It takes what is coming in, then carry away the toxins and the waste to the organs that are for excretion. So if you are not active, you are piling those things and they are going to affect you. So for me, I want to encourage us, uh, the middle class, to make deliberate effort, to do things the right way, because if you are sick, you will not be productive. The people who are depending on you will go down. All the things that you have been trying to make will not thrive because you have let your body down. We don't talk of reconciliation, we don't talk of mediation, we don't talk of uh, anything, development, before you have secured your body and you are able to live in a good way. Question. Do you do what I have explained yourself? I'm asking you directly. Do you do it the way I have explained it? Do you understand it? Like how often do you exercise? What time do you exercise? Congratulations. Congratulations if you do the things that I've explained and keep doing it. You are going to achieve optimal health. Thank you very much. Back to you, Emerald. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Coach, uh, for taking us through um, the physical element, the foundation, uh, one of the foundation pillars, uh, which is the physical uh, health. And uh, you have finished just in time with some uh, coin uh, change to spare. Maybe we can just uh, pick up some of the questions in the chat function that I can see. Uh, for instance, uh, someone is asking, our water intake is individual weight divided by nine. Is the intake in liters or what unit of measurement do we use? It's glass, those are glasses. When you divide, you get the number of glasses. Okay, thank you for that. Um, there was another question. Ah, there's a question. Uh, where is the place of fasting in all this? Is the fasting part of wellness? Yes, it is. Uh, fasting is very important, by the way. Uh, why fasting is important is because uh, you, you are able to get uh, Sorry, when you fast, when you fast, you have a break. I said from the word go, 
that uh, when you eat, metabolism takes a lot of chemicals in digestion. So when you break from eating, you are giving your metabolism time to clean up and rejuvenate. It's very wrong, by the way. Some people, since the time they were born, they have never stopped eating. That means their system has always been digesting. Anytime you eat to digest, anytime you eat to digest. So it never rests. So it is not right to keep on eating and eating and eating until the time God calls you on the other side. So what I would want us to ask us to do is to be very careful on how we relate with the food. So the only thing that you can take that does not require digestion is water, plain water. But even when you take juice, it requires to be metabolized. Anything else? So tafadali, fasting is very important and we have got a program on how often you should fast. I, there are certain parameters that also tells you that your body is asking for fasting. Mm -hmm. Also, how long? There are times that we fast for three days, we fast for seven days, and we start for 21 days, 14 days and 21 days. By the way, in Aziba, we have uh, Nini, we created Azima Wellness Retreat Center, where we even take people through so that we can help them to go through a lifestyle adjustment and behavior change program. And you can see that on our Nini, on our website. Uh, Azima Wellness Retreat Center. I know changing behavior patterns is not easy. It's difficult. So when you're trying, especially in a family, let's say you are four in a family and you are the one who have taken decision, change your behavior pattern so that you can live better and the other three are not, you will not succeed if you are living with them. So what we do is that uh, we help people to get into a break, into a place that you are assisted and everything that you are doing is organized for you so that during that time you learn. And we have mentors, we have got coaches, we have got advisors who take you through. By the time you are leaving, you have started adopting a new behavior pattern. And when you come in, by the way, you start with a fast. So yes, fasting is very important and please let's do it together. Okay, uh, thank you so much coach for that. Um, are you able to see any other queries on your end? Just, we have about three minutes before the close of uh, your session. So I, 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 I cannot see another question, but I can add this. Uh, let me say this, eh? uh, for us to be able to live a quality life uh, is a struggle. And why is it a struggle? Because uh, we have been socialized to live in a certain way. And let, allow me to be controversial. Uh, I don't fear controversies, especially when it comes to realities. I have studied widely. I have discussed with many people. And by the way, since before COVID, I used to travel around the world to attend conf uh, wellness conferences. I've gone to all continents to attend wellness conferences. What has come out clearly is that the commercial interest of the people who make consumables, and they are also the people who own or they're able to pay media, are the one who have put us in a box. Our mind is organized and is actually not programmed to, uh, to crave for the wrong things, not the right things. We do not choose what we consume out of knowledge. And Hosea 4, 6 say that people perish because of lack of knowledge. We choose what we use emotionally. Media like, okay, before social media came, TV and radio and print media, they have been using what we call emotional manipulation. Emotional manipulation is that uh, they create very good and attractive uh, nini, uh, images that hook you up to admire to live that kind of a life, like beer. Look at beer, the way it is advertised. Look at Coca-Cola, the way they advertise for sodas. We all know, by the way, most people know. And they even admitted that Coca-Cola has got an, an effect on diabetes, but people can't resist it. Juices, sugar, meat, ah, all these things that we are consuming, it's because of the power of the media. It programs our mind. The schools are not doing any better. And I'm sorry even to mention the church because if the church was playing its role, because that is where most of our people uh, in any, as in any, uh, uh, fellowship, 
if the church and mosque can take it up and teach people how to choose the right things and the connection between what we eat and the diseases that we get, we can be able to get ourselves out of these diseases. So for me, I'm asking, can we come together as a middle class? Talk about this. Make a decision to change our lifestyle. Lifestyle adjustment and behavior change. Then we tell our family members, this is the right thing. And if you want to live well, like I said, I refuse to pay hospital bills for people who are having lifestyle diseases in our family. Because when they were getting sick, they used to come to me. And uh, when they come to me, uh, I was paying. But nowadays I ask, what is the cause of this condition? If you didn't do the right thing, which I have told you that is not right because I keep on talking. God gave me the capacity to communicate and I do. So I want to ask you to join me. We do this together. We let people know and encourage them to adopt a different lifestyle that will lead to optimal health because preventive health is the best way. Hospitals are very expensive, by the way. A night in Nairobi Hospital or MP Shah or Karen Hospital is much more expensive than the best hotels in Nairobi. Even before you are put on ICU and HDU, a, a, a night in a hotel in a, is cheaper than a night in a hospital. The money is going to hospitals. So let us say no more money going to hospitals. Let us choose the things that we need to do and let us use our capacity to say no. In the next session, we'll be looking at the role of the brain because anything we do, by the way, we choose using our brain power. So if we don't secure the brain, we'll still be doing the wrong things. So thank you very much, Emrod. I will be, if you retain me to handle the next session, I'll be taking us through what is the role of the brain and how we can be able to tell what is good and what is not. Because even after all what I have told you, I know majority of you will not do anything. It is an entertainment. I am not an entertainer. I am not a, mo a motivation speaker and I'm not an inspiration speaker. I speak truth to power. So what I'm telling you is take it or leave it. It is something that will have a lot of effect on your life. And I would be happy to help you. If you reach out to me, I normally help people to have this thing become the second part of their life. And it worked for me. It can also work for you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Coach, for taking us through that. Uh, kindly drop your screen. Uh, thank you so much for taking us um, uh, through the, the physical health uh, wellness, wellness element. Colleagues, that was our fellowship coach, Coach Maina Azimio. And I, I, I imagine that already you, you feel that there's a lot to take in, and that is just one aspect, one of the foundation pillars of, uh, of wellness. Um, and with that, we have reached the point where we want to proceed for a health break. Uh, just so that we can uh, stretch our legs. Um, yes. So that we can be able to stretch our legs uh, and be able to refresh our cups of tea, cups of coffee, glass of water, whatever we need to do so that we can come back for the next session. Uh, when we come back, we will be having our fellowship uh, director, uh, Reverend Professor Peter Gishure, who will be taking us um, uh, through his next uh, 40 minute session, and then we can uh, proceed from there. Thank you so much. It is now 11.44. See you back in uh, five minutes. That is 11.49. Thank you.
Welcome back again, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we have just come back from our health break. Um, I'd like to welcome you back uh, to the second session of the introductory se uh, introductory session. Today we are having our introduction introductory session um, for the five month fellowship national certificate. for the virtual personal development coaching course for the year 2021 for Meditas in Kenya. Um, in the first segment, we have just been uh, taken through physical health wellness by one of our, one of our faculty, uh, our fellowship coach, Coach Maina Azimio. And uh, we are now proceeding to the second uh, segment where our fellowship director, uh, Reverend Professor Peter Gishure will take us through uh, conflict, uh, introduction to conflict, conflict transformation, the aspect of conflict transformation. And today being the introductory segment, he'll be taking us through um, three elements, spectrum of uh, conflict resolution, uh, conflict transformation, and, and also a set of techniques um, to apply. And with that, just a few housekeeping rules. Kindly remember to put in your questions in the chat function so that they can be addressed as we proceed with the presentation. And um, yes, with that, I would like to kindly request uh, Reverend Professor Peter Gishure to take the floor. Thank you very much. Can you share, please? Yes. Okay. Uh, yet. Yes, I'm just sharing in one minute. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So, yeah, yeah, it's all right. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, so uh, after hearing uh, Coach Maina giving us about our own health, especially our own physical health, you know, there's also something we call uh, health in our meditation process. And this is where we are getting a new paradigm of conflict transformation. And here is where we are looking at the well-being of the mediator and the well-being of those people who uh, are in the meditation uh, process. So many times uh, people uh, look for ways of trying to uh, resolve their problems in many ways. And that's why we have with this spectrum of uh, uh, conflict transformation. Next slide, please. Oh. Yeah, so in, in, the, in the spectrum of uh, conflict resolution, um, so we have the adjudication or litigation which is considered to be very low because it does not build relationships. Uh, then they have already talked about arbitration, which I think you are aware of, which also helps us probably to, to solve problems without going to courts, but having somebody as an arbitrator. Uh, but then other methods have been uh, suggested, and that is conflict management. Uh, and, and then conflict resolution, and then mediation. And now we are saying mediation uh, stands in the middle because it's a process where you can have all this management or conflict resolution or conflict transformation. Now, next slide. The, the term conflict management and conflict resolution uh, seem to presume that the conflict itself is a problem. And that's not the, the case. We know that, uh, that conflict can be very healthy because it gives you your identity. It helps you to uh, get your space. It also helps you to give your opinion, uh, even if when it's contrary to what is held. So something negative, uh, or so, this, so it's not negative always or it's not something that we need to fix or get rid of. It's something that it can be, it's neutral. It depends how you get it. 
So this approach often misses the value of conflict and disagreement in our lives. So conflict management, uh, which is, uh, uh, is suggested by many people, is instead of focusing on resolving differences between people, conflict management takes a pragmatic approach to conflict by constructing agreements and practices that allow people to effectively cooperate despite the differences. Here we are saying COVID management does not uh, 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 resolve the differences that people have, but tries to manage. So, but it can be useful in conflict based on a difference of values, of opinions. So where people, uh, they, they, they differ on values and opinions, a conflict management can be very useful. Our differences involving difficult clients or customers or constituents uh, when you are in a shop and you, you, you don't have time to, uh, to resolve the, the issue, you can actually manage it because it's, it's, the, it's a moment thing. Or, or when there is a difference based on communication or personality style. So that's where conflict management is used. And, uh, and, and we always say it has value. Then when it comes to conflict resolution, which emerges from an imperative to meet human psychological needs, a conflict resolution is typically more short-term focused and is content centered and is fixated on solving issues in relationships where conflict appears. So again, we're saying conflict resolution is good because it can be useful in task-related conflicts, uh, conflict involving role and job clarity, conflict stemming from miscommunication and misinterpretations, and, and then lastly, misperceptions. So that's where conflict resolution can be useful. But now we are proposing uh, conflict transformation as a better way of that we, we reach uh, to our uh, to the people we are helping in mediation. Next slide. So conflict transformation, unlike conflict management, which focuses on providing tools to mitigate conflict, and conflict resolution, which focuses on providing uh, creative solutions through resolving conflict constructively, conflict transformation asserts that individuals, individual conflicts are influenced by larger uh, cultures, systems, and structures that promote uh, the continuation of conflict. So, so conflict transformation aims at addressing structural and social root causes by challenging injustices and restoring human relations, and it deals with ethnical and value-based dimensions. So as a mediator, you'll, you'll discover that when people are talking to you, what you see is a tip of an iceberg, but deep down, there are many other challenges that the, the, the persons in mediation are going through. So whereas a drug conflict transformation involves transforming the relationship that support violence, as we have seen, conflict management approaches to seek merely manage and contain conflict, and conflict resolution approaches to uh, seek to move conflict parties away from zero sum positions toward a posi positive outcome, often with the help of external actors. So this is the kind of re reality we get, whether we are doing it in the family, between communities, in the place of work, people come with their own stand and, uh, the, and positions, and they don't want to see face to face, and they don't want to solve the problem, <clears throat> but, but they want to have what they call a win-lose paradigm, while, while conflict transformation wants to bring what they call a win-win uh, paradigm where everybody feels in one way or the other, they are winners. So according to Berghoff Foundation, 
Conflict transformation means a generic, comprehensive term referring to actions and processes seeking to alter the various characteristics and manifestations of violent conflict by addressing the root causes of a particular conflict over the long term. So here the key word is addressing the root causes. And a new as a mediator, you discover that this is something that probably will make you a better mediator if you can be able to, to interrogate the root causes of the conflict that people have. It aims to transform negative destructive conflict into positive constructive conflict. As we saw, conflict is neither good or bad, but if it escalates, it can become destructive. But we can also uh, harness conflict and make it uh, constructive. Uh, uh, and uh, deal with the structural, behavioral, and attitudinal aspect of conflict. So the term refers to both the process and the completion of the process. We shall see this when we are, we are coming to see the techniques, uh, how the various people have brought about uh, the techniques of doing this conflict uh, transformation. So conflict transformation theory and practice and process comprise of, the first one is mapping the conflict formation. So all parties, all goals and all issues. So this is very important. Sometimes uh, in, in mediation, we may not go to, to see who are all the parties and what are all the goals and all, all, all the issues, we, we only rely on what the actors bring to table. Secondly, bringing in forgotten parties with important stakes in the conflict. Again, we forget that when people have, want to, be, to go through a mediation, sometimes they, they do hide some information that they may think uh, or that is important, or some people whom they don't want to be beneficiaries of this mediation. But in a conflict transformation, uh, the mediator may want uh, to, to know, are there other people involved? Does this, uh, are you the only people uh, here who are there? So who are the other parties that you, you may have forgotten? Uh, the thirdly, we have uh, having highly em empathic, dialogues with all parties singly. That means that a mediator will not just come, you know, the way you come and introduce yourselves in the mediation and everybody say who they are. The mediator here may want to have an, uh, something to an empathetic, to have some empathy on, on both sides. What, what is your deep uh, uh, expectations? or what are your feelings about what is happening? And so when you have them on one, one on one, it makes it, uh, then you are, you'll be able to, uh, to moderate the, the discussion so that you are able to, uh, to know what they are saying. Some people say things, but there are those things that are not said. Then fourthly, each conflict worker may specialize on one conflict party. So again, that's a, is the same that, uh, that you, you are looking at uh, what each party is doing and what are they uh, thinking. So in these dialogues, number five, identifying acceptable goals in all parties. So what are the goals? Where do you want to reach? Now that, now that you have identified or the forgotten parties, now you are, the, the goals will be brought to four. And this brings us now, now to number six, where we say we are bringing in forgotten goals that may open new perspectives. Uh, where do we want to go? Why is this, are, are you the only one who are touched by this uh, problem? How many members, is there somebody within the family that uh, needs uh, that is there, you know, um, 
uh, when when uh, uh, when the they, they went to the to the home of uh, uh, David and uh, they, they were looking at uh, the sons uh, and they were asking, is there another son that is there? You know, there's someone asking uh, Jesse, are there other sons? Because uh, and then Jesse says, well, you know, is that small boy, he's, he's tending the, the sheep you know, and Jesus, and Jesus was very innocent, but, but someone say, no, I want to see all your sons, you know? And so, because uh, his mission was to see whom God was calling. So when we are, good, um, uh, when we are bringing other people and, uh, and, and to say, what was the goal of, uh, of Jesse? Probably his goal was to have one of his bigger sons to be chosen. But he forgot that probably the goal was to choose the best and the one that God has chosen. Number seven, arriving at overarching goals acceptable to all parties again. After bringing the forgotten goals, now you get a new overarching goals that are accepted, acceptable to all parties and that makes you even proceed much better. Okay. Number eight, Arriving at a short, evocative goal formulations. Again, every mediator now can uh, can um, identify with this that you you now help people now to uh, to to make uh, a better decisions about what they want and uh, and how they can reach an agreement where they have now uh, involved everybody. Number nine, helping define the task of all parties with that goal in mind. Now that they have got a new goal, which have uh, included other parties, which have also brought new goals. Now, uh, these parties must be, uh, must now do this, uh, this embedding the conflict from where it was and embedding it elsewhere. So the conflict will, be, will have to shift because now you have brought a new people and bringing the forgotten parties and goals into the, into the form. And this is, uh, we, we cannot be able to say this is very important. Number 10, uh, verifying how realizing that goal would realize parties' goals. So are they really uh, agreeing? Are they buying into it? And, and this is, uh, this is something that need to be verified uh, and uh, seen that this that there is an agreement among all the parties. And then eleven, helping parties meet at the table uh, for self-sustaining process. Helping parties meet at the table for self-sustaining process. So here the key word is uh, sustainability. Because COVID transformation uh, won't something that can be uh, can recur um, over a longer time. Then twelve withdrawing from the conflict, go on to the next being on call. So this is very important. Yes, next. So conflict, uh, and this one now. Uh, it, should, it should not be regarded as an isolated event that can be resolved or managed, but as an integral part of society's ongoing evolution and development. So conflict should not be understood solely as an inherently negative and destructive occurrence, but rather as a potentially positive and productive force for change if harnessed constructively. So here, the key word is to be very constructive. So conflict transformation goes beyond merely seeking to contain and manage conflict, instead seeking to transform the root causes of a particular conflict. So conflict transformation is a long term, gradual and complex process 
requiring sustained engagement and interaction. So COVID transformation is not just an approach and a set of techniques, but a way of thinking about and understanding conflict itself. So these slides, of course, will be shared as some people are already asking. You will get all these slides. So we now reach now where uh, a meditator may ask now. Yes, this sounds very good. Uh, but what are the, uh, how do I manage uh, this kind of uh, confidence transformation in the realm of mediation? So we see that the conflict trans uh, transforming a conflict requires uh, a transcending the goals of conflicting parties, which are to transcend the meaning going beyond. Because when people come, they they look at only what is hurting them. They don't have the whole the bigger picture. You know, when you come, it's like people going to say. Uh, blind people going to see uh, an elephant or, or to know to discover an elephant. Each will go and touch one part of the elephant. One is a trunk, like a trunk of tree. Others is like a blanket. Others is something very, very sharp, whatever. Uh, but now you need to, to put together and see the bigger picture. That's what it means to, to transcend, to see the bigger goal, the bigger picture, over there. Then defining other goals. Uh, there must be other goals that are there. And then C, disembedding the conflict from its original situation and embedding it in a more promising place. So sometimes when people come to resolve a conflict or to manage a conflict, they want to stay in their comfort zones. The conflict transformation will want to embed you in a, another place where it's not, not, not very comfortable, but very promising. And this is achieved through dialogue based on empathy, non-violence, and joint creativity. So you make one party empathize with the other party. You become a non-violent. You don't want any violence uh, meted on another person. And we, just as we are told uh, by um, uh, Coach Minor, that the, the person is uh, created in the image and the likeness of God. Uh, everybody should be seen uh, in their own dignity and their own right to exist. So we shouldn't even think of, of any violence whether verbal, physical, psychological, uh, or otherwise. Then, of course, uh, being uh, what we call joint creativity. We must be able not to say, how can we be uh, creatively look at the problem that we, is affecting us? So COVID transformation is therefore a process of engaging with and transforming the relationships, interests, the discourses, and if necessary, the very constitution of society that supports the continuation of violent conflict. So this is very important for us to understand. And so one method that is, has been uh, uh, proposed by many uh, conflict transformation proponents is called the transcend method. So transfer, transfer method uh, means redefining the situation so that what looked incompatible is unlocked, opening up new landscape, creativity and its application to contradiction is a key. So here we are, we are trying to change the, to tell the people it's possible that you people can live together. It's possible that this thing is going to be, can be resolved. It's possible that all of you can get a share in the cake. And uh, then, but we have to be uh, creative 
and uh, remove the contradiction that is within us. That's the, the, the kind of transcend method that is uh, uh, proposed. Next. So initial dialogue is undertaken with each party, individually, as I said earlier, to identify varied goals, eliciting creative approaches from all parties to find ways of transcending incompatibilities. So this is, as I said earlier, yeah, even in the, in the mediation table, is very good for the mediator to be able to, to touch base with both sides individually and, and trying to see uh, uh, what uh, they can be done and what, and what cannot be done uh, before they bring it to the table of mediation. So specific goals should be identified that are acceptable to each party individually in order to arrive at an overarching, overarching goals that are acceptable to all parties collectively. So that's very important to identify uh, the goals that are acceptable to each, to all the parties. So the primary tool is empathetic. So you, 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 you keep going back to people saying, when people are not empathetic, they're not living their human life. And uh, uh, Coach Maina has said that it's also your whole health is concerned because to become human is to be empathetic. Do to others what you like them to do unto you as the first rule. Second rule, do good, avoid evil. So when, when you see there's a person hurting, you do not feel happy about that. Uh, it has happened in many cases where People are happy that other people have had a misfortune. It's good, good riddance, they say. But that is, uh, we say no. In the conflict transformation, we don't feel happy when other people are having misfortunes. We, we empathize with them. Uh, then, of course, being the, the previous slide, please. The previous, yeah, respectful dialogue where people respect each other. They don't call either other's names. Uh, uh, and so, so, uh, so that they, they, they don't, uh, they don't be uh, uh, compounding the COVID that is there. Next. So identify positive elements in the parties and the COVID itself to create the potential of further development. Emphasize shared roots and responsibilities rather than distributing blame and guilt. And, and, this, is, and this is very important in a country like Kenya, where people, we are still trying to define what are our roots, how are we going to be together? Are we really the different ethnic groups or are we Kenyans? And this is becoming a big problem, but also it can happen within, within the same ethnic groups, within the same, uh, between clans, between families, etc. The other thing is be creative and suggest alternative causes of action. Collectively, find a short memorable outcome formula, for example, sustainable development. So you, 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 you tell the people that this is where, where we want. If you tell people we want sustainable development where everybody will be happy, that it may not do justice to all, Complexities, but facilitates communication. Okay, next. So, COVID transformation pursues the development of change processes which explicitly focus on creating positives from the difficult or negative. It encourages great understanding of underlying rationale and structural patterns while building creative solutions that improve on relationships. Next. So a transformational perspective is built upon two foundations. And this is now where 
you as a mediator must come in that a capacity to envision conflict positively. Now the question would be, can you be able to do that? It's a natural phenomenon that creates <clears throat> potential for constructive growth and two, a willingness to respond in ways that maximize this potential for pot positive change. Here we are, we are trying to tell you that yes, it's not you the mediator who is having a problem, but unless you accept yourself that if you are in a state of com conflict, you'll be able to uh, have that capacity to envision conflict positively within yourself, whether it's you with your employer or your, uh, elsewhere, then you become a better mediator because now you'll also understand and you'll be able to uh, engage the, 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 the people you are helping to mediate in a, in a very positive way. And also try to maximize the potential for positive change. Many people minimize the potential and they maximize their problem because they want to have this, to grab, to get all the money. And you, you can say in Kenya, we have had uh, big families which were billionaires and they're still fighting. They, they can't even enjoy the world that they were left behind because they, they're still fighting in courts and the courts are taking forever. The lawyers are enjoying their, their revenue and these people, they can't do anything because they, they, they can't maximize the, the advantages they have, but they maximize on the money that they want to get and end up not resolving the problem. So uh, as you can see, that, that is uh, my simple uh, presentation. And I can see there are quite uh, some few, uh, uh, a few questions that have been asked and uh, I'm, I'll be happy to uh, answer some of them. I don't know whether I may that you can direct me so that uh, I can be able to focus. Yes, uh, let me just uh, look through some of them and just pass them along. <clears throat> mm. I no comments at the moment, uh, but positive feedback uh, in terms of uh, the content and uh, elaborate uh, presentation, um, I, I think, this one, people just need to digest uh, because I mean, conflict transformation, it is, uh, it requires a complete shift of mindset. Um, and, and this will inform how we deliver in our work. I think just to tie in, 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 in one of your, in, in, as you presented, you kept on making reference to Coach Azimio's element of uh, wellness and especially physical wellness, because that is what is taking us, uh, taking us through today. Um, but then I think I would like to pick your brain on uh, the connection, the connection that you see, because you're, 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 you're trying to uh, bring out the role that a mediator has within this conflict and within this dispute and how they can manage that dispute for um, a better solution. And so what disposition would they need to be in um, to be able to embody yeah, the, the conflict transformation expert that they need to be, beginning from the physical aspect? Yes, uh, as you can see, uh, sorry. Um, uh, when I was talking about uh, conflict resolution, we say that it, it manages the uh, conflict resolution goes to the psychological well-being of the conflict, while uh, while management uh, try to settle people so that they can live for the moment. Now, these are some of the neg negative negative. Uh, uh, energies that people create when they're in conflict. And uh, uh, while uh, management does not really solve the, the, those energies, neither the, the, the resolution, uh, resolution. So when it comes to well-being of the person, uh, we are told that uh, when people are stressed, 
and I think uh, uh, Coach Menda can uh, trace to this, they are, their physical being is affected. They, they, they normally say that, uh, that the, the, our diseases are psychosomatic, that uh, my, the, if you are in a state where everything is tense, where people are uh, thinking about how they are going to get everything from the other person, uh, psychologically, uh, people are not able to uh, to be to grow in a healthy way in the, what we call the well-being of the person. So we are saying that COVID transformation is is an attitude that you take as a mediator, where you want to help yourself first. Which this one will come back uh, when we are talking about uh, non-violence uh, stands where you you take a stand and say these are human beings. They are created in the image of God. I would like also to help them to be human to each other and to themselves. And I also want to be human to them and open myself to them. So this is a very important. Uh, you as a mediator, you're not just going there that you, you get your stipend, but you're also going there so that you can also uh, come out of that place knowing that you have uh, helped the parties to reach a settlement and also go beyond the settlement. And that's for me, I think it's very important for a personal health. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Professor, for taking us uh, through that. At this point, I think I'd like to call upon our uh, convener, mediator Wangari Kabiru to say uh, a few points. Karibu, mediator Wangari. Thank you very much, Medita Emerald, and uh, for moderating us uh, during this particular session. Uh, it's, it's, it's always such a great delight as we are able to add in uh, new knowledge and new insights. Uh, so colleagues who are mediators and also the ones who are not yet mediators, but have an interest in the work that is around uh, dispute resolution and just people being more peaceable or and also society thriving and um, advancing more. I greet you and I really uh, do acknowledge you and commend you for being part of the cohort one of the for the fellowship and the, our program for on um, conflict transformation. We as uh, Wasiliana Hub have been having the conversation with regard to what, how should mediation be seen? And uh, what's been very clear for us as we've been uh, doing our work is that there's a bigger picture of mediation that society is not yet seeing and even ourselves as the practitioners. And as we continue to have the conversations with a professor um, whose background is actually in this field, and also as we uh, have been able to do the, uh, the, the various meetups we've been able to be having um, prior to the, uh, the, the, the closing down of the country in 2020, as Wasiliana Hub, we were having monthly meetups where we were able to bring in uh, mediators together. So those conversations, would actually uh, always leave us with a hunger. I mean, the clarity that the, the community has a certain hunger that it wants to do much more, but it wasn't really, really clear what that was. And so as we continue to just uh, bounce this off with uh, yeah, Professor, Professor Gishure, so the clarity comes in that we are made of more. And that more is what we are really uh, working around. We are made of more as persons ourselves. And that's why for this particular fellowship, it's uh, starting off with, our own wellness, because until the mediator is well, then every, nothing else can be well. Or when the mediator is well, then everything else then has greater chances of uh, uh, being well. And that's why, I mean, we were really delighted when we were able to uh, connect on with uh, uh, Coach Maina Zimio, and especially in the four areas that uh, he handled on physical health, um, uh, wellness, emotional, mental, and also financial. So we'll really, really be uh, very privileged throughout this fellowship to be able to journey with some um, uh, Coach Maina Zimio, tapping into his experience and just in, um, awakening us in those four areas. Uh, so at, uh, at this juncture, my, my comments will move into the administrative uh, structure of the fellowship, just so that we are uh, more or less together. So the fellowship uh, uh, opened up and was, was open and closed uh, applications as at yesterday. So congratulations to yourself. I hope where you are, you're giving yourself a bit of some, you know, high five and claps to yourself because uh, yeah, you took the step and you're one of the 
you know, the ones who have uh, made a step that, yes, I'm ready for that next level. I probably don't yet, yet understand it or see it yet, but I do hope that even through this session, we've been able to see, um, so we've been able to see something, I mean, something new and something different. So uh, with that, then it means that the persons who had applied and uh, uh, have participated in this particular session then form the cohort one. As a program that is a series, then uh, it is important and it's also a, a, a requirement that you participate throughout in all the sessions. When, and we, when you say throughout in all the sessions, if we have a session every month, which is actually on the third Saturday of the month. Um, please look at the website where you did your registration. All the information is there, it indicates, and even the, 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 the Zoom link that you use to log in, it indicates each of the respective um, week, uh, weekends that we will be uh, connecting on together. And each of the weekends we have um, new, to new topics that build on into this conversation. They build on the personal development, which is uh, mainly centered around wellness, and then also the conversation on conflict transformation. And then the third area is on us being able to develop um, our practices. Um, and that those are insights from different coaches, uh, business side, uh, online dispute resolution, and also on impact. Then uh, number, number, number three is that uh, we have a WhatsApp group that is to support us as we uh, carry on with this fellowship. If you're not on that WhatsApp group, the email that you received to be able to log into this particular session, please send an email back and just indicate that you're not in the WhatsApp group um, and put in your telephone number so that then we can be able to add you onto the WhatsApp group. So that WhatsApp group will be the main way that we communicate with each other and support each other throughout um, this fellowship. The coaches will also and are, uh, are, are already on, uh, on the platform. And so if someone is looking for uh, any sort of support or you have any inquiries, let's use that to dialogue with each other and also just to uh, grow um, together. As a pointer, um, by, by the connections that we, uh, we now end up making, whether it's as the participants or with the coaches or the guest mentors that we bring along, that is not Wasiliana Hub now saying, please connect with these particular persons for any, uh, for any probably the assignments or any uh, follow-ups. That's really up to your judgment. What we bring is we bring you peer learning, then please pick what is useful for you. And if you so choose to be able to advance, I mean, some of them have programs, then that is out of Wasiliana Hub. Uh, we, we, we do not have the, the, the arrangement, but most of them do have programs. So if you so wish, please take time to be able to get to understand them. And if you so choose to take them, then yeah, it's not uh, a requirement of this particular fellowship, but it could be something that could help you in uh, something that you need to be able to advance on. So feel free to be able to engage with them and also feel free to be able to connect with them as uh, you so wish. Um, the other thing is that uh, uh, one of the key things as we do this fellowship is that we are, we are using this also to support us in developing our use of the technology which is the technology that is now required of us as, um, uh, as, as uh, uh, online dispute resolution professionals and mediators who are doing virtual. So you, we will find that uh, the moderator and even the, the coaches will keep prompting us, for example, in the next session. Let's all make sure that we are somewhere where we can be able to be, let's say if it's on video, or you can be able to speak, because this is the time when we are able to let me say, use this also to practice ourselves. And especially because one of the sessions we'll be having is ODR. And so I know that the coaches will also be uh, really prompting us in that particular area so that by the time the five weeks are done, we even know how to use breakout rooms because we have uh, been able to use this uh, particular uh, platform to be able to test that. And that's also why we have the WhatsApp, uh, WhatsApp so that we can create a safe space, a community that I mean, is safe together to be able to ask those questions we can't ask sometimes outside about either the work or technology or other things. Um, we encourage the colleagues to please be able to uh, work around with each other so that they can support each other, whether it's in, with regard to the use of technology or practice or areas that we have questions. The moderators for the session and also the conveners uh, are, not, are, are, are here to just put us together, then please now connect on as a community. If there's something that someone is uh, struggling with, please put it to the community. For example, if you're uh, struggling a bit with getting through the technology, put it out to the community. There is someone who is a tech savvy person um, and we, as, as the moderators or as the conveners, we are not necessarily sitting with that. There is probably someone who is um, a guru in um, the how to practice uh, mediation in, in an area that 
you have an interest in. So please put it out there. They will be the ones to support you. So what this means is that if you now direct uh, queries uh, to the, uh, the convening team, we will kindly request, please direct to the group so that we are building on to, as, as, as a community together, unless it's something that's really specific um, onto the structure of Wasilian Hub. So the fellowship back again is five months and uh, the five months, yes, is what um, uh, uh, gives uh, 10 hours credit. It's uh, two hours for every time when we come together, it's, uh, it's two hours. And yes, there's a certificate at the end of the program, which uh, will be able to indicate in terms of the areas that you have been able to cover. But most of all is just as we do as Wasilian Hub when we do our activities, is that we are hoping that you will come out of here uh, with something much more. The certificate is, is really you know, an accompaniment, but it's more about us building ourselves. I mean, there are so many uh, new faces to most of you here, I'm sure. Quite a number of you as Wasilian Hub, we've probably been able to interact because we host a number of sessions. By the time we are done, we should be able to be able to get to know each other uh, get to know areas we can work on together and also probably some areas we could be able to collaborate in practice and also in other uh, areas that uh, we do we do engage in so that is a brief on the um, administrative side uh, mediator emerald and also um, uh, mediator uh, sarah Ter will be uh, with you will be on the face of the of, of this program um, uh, a great deal as, as as we do journey a lot and uh, we really commend them and acknowledge them to move into how we will be closing this particular program just so that we can um, have that bigger picture. So uh, we are working on a, 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 the 24 hours lead in summit, which is a leadership summit, which will be hosted in uh, November. And that is the climax of this fellowship that we are in. Just as a, an, an early pointer, the speakers at that 24 hour summit are seated here right now. And high chances, I'm not speaking about the fellowship director and I'm not speaking about the, the, the fellowship coach who's also just taken us through now. We are speaking about ourselves. So this, this, this fellowship is climaxing with a summit whereby each of us here who's a fellow on the program will be the speaker. We greatly honor you. We greatly believe that each of you carries so much and that there's so much that we can be able to offer into this world. I mean, being familiar with uh, some of you, I know that some of you are teachers, some of you are uh, bankers, some of you are farmers, some of you are former teachers, some of you are former business people, some of you are still in business, some of you are, you know, in, as uh, scientists. We would like to hear how mediation connects with that profession. And so this is an early alert. Let's start thinking through because the program is coming. I know that Mediator Sarah already has you on her list and she already has slotted your time. So probably some of you will be speaking at midnight. Eh? She probably has slotted your 30 minutes already. So think through that profession, even if you're retired from it, how does mediation connect? Because the minute we think through that, then now we can be able to think backwards. So how do we go into um, the, the teaching uh, profession or TS, the, the, the teacher, teacher service commission and speak to them? You're the person to help us to understand that because you have been um, an insider. You have worked in a bank or you work in a bank. You're the person to really help us to understand then how does the banking system work? So that's a, just an early alert that we have the 24 hours um, summit that's coming up in November. It's the one that will close our fellowship. And also with the 24 hours leadership summit, we are also they are developing a publication which also Mediator Sarah Ter is uh, uh, putting together so that we have a, a, a directory for the, for the fellows uh, getting to be able to feature you. Because guess what? As I say, Yana Hub, we don't wait for someone else outside there. We cover you ourselves because you already, are sub, I mean, you already have the substance um, as a practitioner. So with that, those are the key things. So just uh, to recap, just to remind us that uh, one, um, and one is that uh, as, uh, the, uh, as fellows, this is our cohort and it has started now and will run on until November. Um, secondly, we are, we, ex we are expected to be at all the fellowship sessions. And when you attend the fellowship sessions, um, which are these weekends, please make sure you post your name in the chat. You just, just type your name in the, in, the, in the Zoom chat. So that is how you register you or log in. That's how you log your, that I attended. So like right now, if you haven't, just type in your names in the, 
what in this chat for the Zoom, not the, not on the WhatsApp chat, on the Zoom chat, that, then that records that you have attended. Then we have a WhatsApp group, which is a safe space for us to be able to grow together. When I say it is a safe space for us to be able to grow together, that means that the link for that WhatsApp group is not for circulation. Also, the link for this meeting is not for circulation because this is a cohort and a cohort journeys together. Then um, the other thing is that we have the 24 hours leadership summit, that's uh, the summit that's coming up in uh, November. And key things around it is that you and I are the speakers there. So start preparing your 30 minutes um, uh, speaking presentation. And then also, secondly, we have a publication that will be part of uh, the, the, the closure of the, the fellowship. And those are the key areas of uh, uh, the administrative side. So let's chat more in the WhatsApp group. A reminder, let's see how to support each other. If you have any needs, please request the colleagues to support you. If you have needs of how to log into the session, do test runs with the colleagues uh, before this, this day for the sessions so that it's much easier. And um, uh, yes, and that I think that will really, really help. So with that, um, I would just like before I hand over to Mediata Emerald to be able to uh, close us, because I know today we have um, now taken on the additional 45 minutes um, to cover for uh, the time we um, had before we, st we, uh, we, we started. I probably would like to uh, speak a bit into uh, the uh, Professor, Professor Gishure and also the uh, Coach Maina. Uh, Coach Maina, Professor Gishure. Yes. So I'd like to speak into yeah, Coach Maina. Yes, Professor, I can see you, Coach Maina. I'd like to speak. Yeah. And um, so when, when speaking into uh, uh, Coach Maina, I know in the area of um, physical health, there's, there's so much, there's so much that can be covered. Uh, is there something else probably you could uh, leave us with? In uh, you know, if we can just give you like the two minutes, something you can leave us with, and then from there, then we can invite Professor to be able to now give his uh, uh, roundup uh, to a roundup. And yes, kindly, Coach Maina. Sorry, Coach Maina, you're muted. Can you hear me? Okay, thank you, oh, thank oh, you, thank oh, you very much. Oh, yes. Thank you very much. Uh, I just want to appreciate uh, you for inviting me to share my ideas on wellness uh, with your members. I am a mediator personally, and I am practicing one. I focus on the area of uh, wealth and uh, disputes and zikonyingi, there are very many nowadays. So business partners, uh, families, succession. So those are the kind of things that I focus on because that is where I have a lot of experience. But I always tell people this one thing. If your health is compromised, all these other things means nothing. So up to where I shared, I shared on the foundational pillars of wellness. We have aspirational, aspirational. And in the aspirational pillars of wealth, I, uh, health, I would also want us to focus on them so that uh, we are holistic. And uh, those aspirational pillars, uh, it's like spiritual. You heard that I did not talk about spiritual wellness. You can't be well if you are not connecting with God. I am not talking about religiosity. It's not about faith. It's about spirituality. So we all have that spiritual connection. For whatever you believe, but you need spiritual wellness to be able to thrive in all that you do. Otherwise, uh, you will not be able to get to your optimum level. Uh, career, you know, it's important that you grow your career for service because God sent you this way for a purpose. And we'll be doing that more on the mental and emotional area. So we'll connect the dots and see how they work together. But after we have taken care of the foundation and we are good, it's important that we build those other areas and we have temperance. Temperance is a moderation, moderation. Even in food, you have to moderate food. Don't sleep too much because by the way, this is a fact. You do more damage to your health. If you sleep more hours 
than when you sleep less hours. I repeat, more damage when you sleep more hours than when you sleep less hours. Tuesday has been declared a public holiday. Do not <laughs> sleep for 12 hours because it's a holiday. You are going to damage your body because you will not be active. I say that you are supposed to be upright. You're supposed to walk around after every two hours. So don't sleep more than it is necessary. So anything that you do, whatever you are eating, even exercise, don't overexercise. Don't overdo it. Like for example, when you are on the gym and you are on the treadmill, you are on the bike. You see, they normally put the, uh, the, the, the good quality ones have got some, uh, nini, some gauge that measures your heartbeat. Do you know? that if you overexercise, your body will not be able to give a, a, to transfer the oxygen from the respiratory to the circulatory, and you're going to faint. There's a formula to get that. In fact, you should not allow your heartbeat to go beyond the limits. And how do you get the limits? Get 220 minus your age. I repeat, 220 minus your current age. So if you get that, that is the heartbeat that you should go at the highest. So when you hold the nini, the knobs that are able to translate and measure at what your beats per minute are, don't allow it to go beyond that. Otherwise, you'll collapse on the treadmill. You'll collapse on the bike. So there are very many things that uh, we need to know. But because we are together here and uh, we'll be having this up to November, I will uh, be sharing tidbits and uh, we have your uh, WhatsApp. And you can also approach me, I'm a corporate trainer and I also train uh, families and I train individuals and Karibu Nisana to Azuma Retreat Center for a relaxation as well learn how you can become a better person and I'm happy to be a mediator. Thank you. Asante Sana, coach, I understand there's something uh, quite uh, good about sunshine. What is it? And uh... You know, we, some of us uh, suntan, uh, yeah? and, and, and then, then you're telling us not to sleep. Yeah? And then also sometimes you tell us, don't get too excited, yeah? moderate, you know, probably just yeah. tell us a bit about that, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. thank you very much. Actually, uh, now from uh, Nini, from the level that uh, we move up upwards to aspirational, uh, sunshine is part of the basics because vitamin D is made by the skin. God uh, had a very good plan for mankind. All things that you must have are free. All the things that we must have to live optimally are free access. It is us who have commercialized them and made them unique. Look at it, oxygen, air is always free anywhere. Even though nowadays you have got the polluted air. Water, you get, we used to get water from the streams. It was free until now that uh, we are buying water, drinking water in uh, supermarkets. You need to have money to do that. The other normal sources are polluted. Then sleep, sleep surely. <laughs> Though there is also, it depends on what kind of a bed you are sleeping in and the noise where you're sleeping. Eh? But anyway, sleep is also free, you see? So uh, food, those days uh, you just get, land was not a problem. You do your tilling and uh, you get your food. Most of our families are subsisting at home and uh, they are able to grow their own food. So it's so all free. Sunshine, sunshine is very critical because even if you take vitamin, uh, vitamin uh, calcium, even if you take calcium, you require vitamin D to be able to help your body to absorb calcium. And calcium is very critical in our body. It regulates the acid alkaline balance. Acid alkaline balance. So if you don't have vitamin D, then you are in trouble. And that's actually associated with many of the cases that people just collapse and they die. So the moment your acidity has gone beyond a certain limit, especially in the blood, you'll go down. So all these things are interconnected in a very deep way. So yes, get out when there's sunshine. When you are not dressed the way you are dressing now because of the baridi, mm -hmm. exposed, and you, need, you should cover your body 30%. Get out there and get sunshine. 30 minutes per day. 30 minutes per day. If you don't get that, then you should compensate. But it is important that uh, you try to make sure that. And lastly, God placed man in the Garden of Eden. Garden of Eden. Our habitat is in forests or vegetation. Again, research has proved now that uh, 
we human beings require 30 minutes, 30 minutes in nature per day. If you don't get that every weekend, like today, if I was not with you, I'll have gone for a hike. Today, my team have gone hiking uh, Nini, uh, uh, Kinagop. So always make time to go and ask Nini, uh, have time with nature because that is our natural environment. So all these things working together, they are part of what makes uh, wellness and uh, we will be working more on that. And if you come to Azima, we can take you deeper into that. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. So, yeah, thank you very much. And also for the invitation and the colleagues um, are, are able to connect with you also on the, uh, the, the fellowship uh, WhatsApp group to be able to ask questions or make any further follow up. Uh, Professor, we, this fellowship is uh, focused on uh, personal uh, development coaching. Uh, and uh, the, the center of it, there's a big, the, the big portion of it is on wellness and then also the conflict transformation. So the key question to you is, uh, why should uh, personal development be a, a focus or, of importance to um, mediators? I mean, the mediators already, we, we went in and we did our professional certification. I mean, why is it of importance? And then also how else or how can we be able to uh, uh, get the personal development? Professor Kange? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, as I said uh, earlier, uh, we need a, a healthy nation and also well-being, as uh, Coach Mena said. Uh, we need a healthy environment. We need people who are reconciled. Uh, we need people who are able to uh, change negative energies into positive energies, because it affects the, the well-being of the person. So when you get a, a healthy nation, a healthy people, uh, the level of contentment with life uh, grows. And that's for me, I think is what is most important mm -hmm. because people are depressed. And sometimes they're depressed because they are not doing the right things, either with their bodies or with the decision they are making about life or even the environment that they are living in. If a child lives in a, in a home that they, uh, or is always in conflict, the child cannot grow healthy even if he's doing a lot of exercise. So we say that there is a connectivity between a, a healthy environment and the exercises that we, we are going to do or the eat, the food we eat, the air we breathe. We, God made us in such a way that we have to, to look at the life holistically. And uh, that's for me, I think, is very important uh, for mediators and also for those people who are going to be uh, who are in conflict and they need the mediation services. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much uh, for the, for those remarks, and uh, I, I I believe that continues to affirm uh, each and every fellow who's on this program, and just uh, as we as we encourage each other to complete, it's a journey we start together. I am looking forward to how Coach will will get us to be able to be accountable to each other uh, up, up to the end of the five months, because I'm sure these are things that are at his fingertips um, in 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 his area when we get now to uh, chatting onto the WhatsApp group. So that uh, when 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 charity does not see Tabitha or doesn't see uh, Mini or doesn't see you know Violet on the uh, uh, on the call or they, that they are silent, you know she's asking where are you or he's or asking where is um, any of these other any other persons. So we are, I'll hand us over back to Mediator Emerald to be able to close us. Um, I just remind you kindly make sure that you have uh, sent in your name into the uh, WhatsApp chat. Uh, not uh, sorry, not the WhatsApp chat into the Zoom chat. Um, as, as a register for your attendance to this uh, particular day. So over to you, uh, Mediator Emerald, and then you'll be able to get us to the closing and also the prayer for our closing. Thank you very much. Asante and God bless you and happy weekend. It's been a delight to spend this uh, Saturday morning with all of you. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mediator Wangari, for that um, conclusion and also for taking us through uh, the administrative segment of this. Um, uh, a session. Um, yeah, I would just like to emphasize uh, that we kindly keep abreast with all the goings on uh, within the WhatsApp group, because within there we have all of us as participants and we also have our faculty members and we can now um, interact and, and, and be able to communicate more and, and get more information and also uh, get more clarity on some of the issues that we may not have been able to address here. Um, I'd also like to extend a very big thank you to our 
our faculty members that have taken us taken us through this session. I'm sure we can all agree that uh, this has been a very um, insightful session for all of us, both on the area of wellness and also on conflict uh, transformation as a whole. And um, yes, so let's 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 keep joining. Let's keep moving. Let us not uh, miss out on any of this. Uh, it is just one day. Uh, it, it may be five months, but it's it's just one day out of the month. Uh, where we can just uh, come in and uh, be able to reap and, and glean from uh, th these people who have been able to uh, prepare themselves to be able to deliver this to us. And with that, uh, we have come to the close of the session. We will close uh, with a national anthem. The second stanza in English, uh, I have put it on the screen and then uh, I will walk you through it. Let one and all arise with hands both strong and true. Service be our honest endeavor and our homeland of Kenya, heritage of Kenya, family we stand to defend. Thank you, participants, for joining and uh, for reciting the national anthem. Uh, we hope to see you next month, uh, but let us keep on engaging. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of the weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good weekend, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Have a nice month. Good afternoon. Thank you. Bye bye. Nice weekend. Nice weekend to you too. Have a nice weekend, all of you. Asante. As well. Nice weekend. Bye. Enjoy your weekend. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for the session. Thank you for attending.